Hey everyone, it's Stephanie here, and today I have my September 2015 paper doll layout to share. It is October, so I am a little bit late. Um, it's actually like the middle of October, so I'm really late. But uh, I finally got it done, and I had a lot of fun with this one. So for my layout, I decided to do Three Men and a Baby. This is a movie that I was obsessed with when I was young. I used to go to my grandmother's and watch this on repeat, which was a little bit more difficult than these days because repeat was on a VCR, so I had to rewind it and play, rewind and play. You know the drill. But it, I pretty much wore the tape out, and I could probably recite the whole thing word for word. I don't know what it was. I just loved this movie. And I I ended up purchasing it and I was actually watching it while I was doing this layout. I didn't own it but I wanted to, I definitely knew I wanted to put it in my movie library. So I did buy it. I think it was like four dollars and I was watching it while I was working on my layout and I realized that I still love it now as much as I did when I was young. So anyway, let's move on to the layout. You can see here I'm already stamping my characters. Now this was a little bit more challenging than most of my doll layouts, mainly because there is not a huge boy selection, and the boys that are available kind of look like teenage boys, so I had to try and get them to look a little bit more grown up since in the movie they're grown ups and I couldn't really depict them to look exactly like the characters just because like I said there is a v limited amount of boy stamps so I kind of mix and match them so you can see here I'm stamping just some heads and then some bodies with no heads which looks kind of weird but I'm going to add heads to different bodies to kind of change them up a little bit and get them as close as possible to the characters in the book or in the movie. So now you can see here I have all these new baby stamps. These just came out. And there is a baby um, paper doll as well as a ton of different accessories that go with the little baby. And I just love this little addition to the paper doll series. So I ended up getting all of them and I used a few of the different components for this layout here. So once I had all the bodies stamped and they're all ready to go, I'm just picking out um, what I'm going to be using for all of their clothes and I'm going ahead and stamping all of the clothes pieces onto some different pattern papers. And I went um, as close as I could to, I was kind of going off the cover of the movie. Um, I shared a picture at the very beginning of the video here with the layout directly beside the cover of the DVD. And I also have pictures of it on my blog post as well. So I was kind of using that um, image to kind of base my layout off of. And for the quote on this one, I just used the song that they sing to Mary, who is the baby in the movie. Um, I love that scene when they sing Goodnight Sweetheart. So I thought that worked perfectly for the quote on this layout. So you'll see a little bit later when we get to the background paper that all these dolls are going to go on to. You'll see that I have that quote printed on the top. So I'm just continuing to stamp all the clothes pieces. I just kind of picked out different pattern papers that replicated the color of clothes that they're wearing on the cover. And I'm just adding some little pink clothes for Mary. Um, she's actually naked on the cover of the movie, but I thought this paper doll would look kind of weird with nothing on it. So I decided to go ahead and actually put some little clothes on her. And plus it's super fun to play with the new little stamps and give her a little dress and a little bow in her hair. So I ended up stamping a few pieces. I wasn't sure what I wanted to use on her. So in the end, I end up only just using the little dress and the little bow, and I don't use the shoes or the little hat that I did there. So once I have all the clothes stamped, I'm gonna set those aside and then do the coloring on the dolls for the skin and the hair. So I'm just using my typical Copic markers that I usually use for skin. My favorite is E00, which is always what I use for the base. And then I'm adding a little bit of E51 and also E11 to the edges of the faces, especially along the hairline, just because I really want to add some shading and make it look like there's a bit of a shadow there under the hair. So I'm just going to go ahead and do all of the skin on all of the dolls, and it still looks a little bit weird. I have some heads on their own that I'm coloring and then some necks with no heads, but it's all going to work out in the end. Everything's going to be attached, and we're actually going to have three full people. So once I have all the skin done and the baby looks super cute, I really love that doll stamp. I don't know what it is, but I just think it's super adorable. But anyway, now that we have that done, she doesn't really have any hair, so we're not going to worry about coloring her hair. But we are going to color the hair on the three guys. So um, they pretty much all have the same hair color. Um, Michael, who is Steve Gutenberg in the movie, he his is the probably the darkest, so I kind of tried to make his a little bit darker. And then the other two I kept pretty similar um, in color. It's just kind of like a dark, darker brown color, but 
not super dark. And then when I actually cut these dolls out, because I have two that have the same hair because they're the same heads, I end up actually cutting a little bit of his hair off. So it just kind of makes it look a little bit different. And I color it a little bit different around the forehead. I don't know if you can tell, but I kind of bring the hairline down a little bit more and add a little bit more um, hair, like hair pieces in the, in the forehead area, just because I'm trying to make them look a little bit different since they're supposed to be two different people. And then once I have that done and everything is colored, I'm going to go ahead and start to cut out and assemble the pieces. So now I have these little heads cut out and now they have little bodies to be attached to. So I'm actually going to attach those to the dolls on the text paper before I cut the entire doll out. So I went ahead and cut out all of the clothes. So now you can see I have all the clothes laid out and they're fully cut out. And now I'm adhering everything to the dolls with some liquid adhesive. And I love to use the liquid adhesive mainly because I like to have a little bit of wiggle room when I'm putting the clothes on them because in order to line everything up, sometimes you kind of have to shift the clothes around. And using the liquid just gives you a little bit more time than a normal um, adhesive runner does. So I'm just matching up the clothes to the dolls that I had picked for each of the guys and I'm just adhering them on and like I said it's not perfect it never is I can't make the dolls look identical but I think it works out pretty well and um, I stay you know pretty similar to what they look like on the cover and also because the shirts aren't really the same style it takes away a little bit and you're gonna see that in a minute when I do Peter which is Tom Selleck in the movie um, he actually is wearing like a button-up with a bow tie that's um, untied in the cover art and I really wanted to put the bow tie onto him so I end up putting it on with this shirt that he's wearing even though it's not a button-up so I think it still works out fine and I always like to add little touches to my layouts that kind of draw the movie in and Peter was the focus on this layout to kind of add a couple little things that were just um, that went per specifically with the movie. So you can see here I have a piece of polka dotted pattern paper and I'm just hand drawing the bow tie pieces that are going to be around his neck. So I'm not an artist by any means but I figured even I could handle this little bow tie. It's pretty straightforward um, design. So you can see there I have them now cut out and they're not adhered yet but I am going to adhere those directly onto his shirt and then just cut off the excess on the top. So I went ahead and cut all the dolls out and you can see now I have his bow tie adhered there. And I'm just taking a gray Copic marker to add some shading to all of their clothes. I usually do this when they're still adhered to the text paper but I completely forgot to do it and definitely wanted to because it really makes the clothes have a little bit more dimension and look more realistic. So I just went ahead and did all of the shading after I had them cut out. For the lighter clothes, I usually use a C1 or a C2 marker, um, and then if I find it still looks a little bit too light, I just build on top of that with a little bit darker of a C color, which is the cool grays. Um, and then any dark areas, like their pants here, I just start off with the C3 or sometimes even a C5, um, and that really gets some great shading onto their clothes and really, like I said, makes it look a lot less flat and makes them look way more dimensional. So now that I have all of the dolls done, this is kind of the funny part of the layout. Um, I'm taking this little paintbrush from the Crazy Things stamp set that goes with the Crazy Birds from Stampers Anonymous. And I'm putting some washi tape on it and just putting some ink onto the edge of the paintbrush. And then I stamped it directly onto Peter's face. And that's just because it's Tom Selleck and he has a really great mustache. And I decided to put that on there to depict him from the movie. And then um, for the two other, for Peter and Jack, their faces still looked really boyish to me, or I'm sorry, Michael and Jack. Um, so to kind of make them look more manly and not so teenagerish, I went ahead and just added a little bit of shading to their cheek area to kind of make them look like they have a little bit of five o'clock shadow. I don't know if I really achieved that or just made them look like they were dirty, but I thought at least it made them look a little bit more old um, and grown up than they did in the first place. So now I have that done, I'm just adhering them to the background piece. And as you can see, I have the quote printed on, like I said. And I just went ahead and adhered um, Jack and Michael on first. And now I'm just putting some liquid adhesive onto Peter. And when I did him, when I cut him out, I cut his arm. So that where his arm meets his shirt, I actually cut through there. So that I could tuck the baby inside of there and make it look like he's actually holding onto her like he is in the movie. So um, I just went ahead and adhered them all with some liquid adhesive. And I'm just putting a block on there to kind of hold them down while the, the glue dries. And make sure everything adheres perfectly. 
And then I forgot to color their shoes. I always seem to miss one part some, when I do these layouts. So I just went ahead and colored them in with Copic markers to finish them off. And then I also went one step further and added the little stain to the bottom of Peter's shirt that he has in the movie cover. And I thought that just really pulled everything together. So now you can see the cover with the layout. They're pretty similar and like I said, this was a ton of fun to create. So I hope you enjoyed this month's paper doll layout based on three men and a baby. And I will see you next month or hopefully this month um, in October for another layout. Thanks for watching.